Hey there, it's Adrian and welcome to another episode. In this one, it's time to put the spotlight back onto germ theory again. I've been thinking a lot about this and I've been thinking about how they've tried to structure this, that they're trying to keep as well, not trying to, they are keeping most people locked in their homes. They've stopped people working, um, they've terrified people and they're doing a mass psychological manipulation of everyone in order that they can do what they're doing with their um, draconian laws and all the other things that they have planned for us. But if we stay focused on this, if you want to build a building that's going to last, you have to stand the building on very solid foundations. Um, and I was thinking about what they've built their entire premise on, and their entire premise is built on a complete fraudulent fabrication and a lie. In fact, a multi-trillion dollar business has been built all around that, and that is the idea of germ theory. Now, there are plenty of articles out there you can read, there's books you can read. I was very fortunate today that one of our subscribers, and thank you for this, sent me a link to a 10-page document. Now, there's going to be a link to that in the description of this video. I'd encourage you to download it and probably print it uh, and have a read of it, and certainly I'm going to carry that with me as well so I can share it with people. Um, I'm just going to read you a few bits of it because it kind of summarizes everything nicely from a, a beginner's viewpoint probably isn't the right way of saying it, from someone who's fairly new to all this. So I'll just dive in and grab a few bits and pieces of this, but I would encourage you to read it, download it, and actually share either this video and all the document because it's really interesting stuff. So it's Exposing the Myth of Germ Theory. It's by Arthur M. Baker, and it is ex extracted with permission from Bacteria, germs and viruses do not cause disease. Discriminating between medical myth and biological fact. Exerted from the book Awakening Our Self-Healing Body. Now many of you will know that I always talk about cause and effect. Everything is causal in its relationship to the effect. And that's exactly the same with all of health. So not many people realize that bacteria and viruses are the result, not the cause of disease. Pasteur's germ theory of disease causation, and it actually goes through here and it talks about how uh, he was trying to prove someone else's theory that came before his time, so it wasn't even his. And it actually talks about how Pasteur was not the originator of the germ theory, and the germ theory of infectious diseases was first published in 1762, almost 100 years prior to Pasteur. And in 1880, Pasteur himself admitted his mistake, according to Dr. Duclau. One of Pasteur's co-workers, Pasteur discovered that microbial species can undergo many transformations. These facts were not consistent with his germ theory and destroyed its very basis. You'd think that would stop it at the time, but obviously it went on from there. As a cause of disease, bacteria do not invade the body, for they are already present in the digestive tract. As needed, bacteria are brought into the circulatory system to aid the process of purging the physiology of accumulated waste. Now, bacteria do have a very beneficial role in your body. You would be dead without them. We all would. Um, they play a massive role in your immune system in the cleanup of toxicity. Bacteria do not cause the death of the organic matter on which they act. However, they are part of the result of the disease, not its cause. Bacteria proliferate because there is dead organic matter for them to feed on, not because they suddenly become malevolent. Bacteria have an important role to perform in the vital process of healing. Germs take part in virtually all disease phenomena that require the disintegration of refuse and toxic matter within the body which the system is endeavoring to remove. They act as scavengers in clearing up the affected area of toxic saturation. As soon as their role is complete, their numbers decline. Germs do not cause disease, rather the body generates disease occasions for the germ proliferation to take place. It is inappropriate to call bacterial activity an attack or an invasion on the part of germs unless we mean it is an attack on the toxins. The only real attacks that take place is the one we make upon our own bodies as we continually assault ourselves with an average of some 30 poisoning acts each day, including the devitalized foods and beverages we consume, the drugs we take, constantly staying up late and overeating needlessly, all of which create an innovation and exhaustion of the body. On the other hand, bacteria cannot thrive in healthy blood. That is why a clean, well-nourished body is not subject to their presence. Living in a germ-free environment is impossible, however, and not even wholly desirable. Trillions of bacteria live in our body all the time. Pus germs 
streptococci can be transformed into pneumonia germs, pneumococci, simply by making minor alterations to the environment. Colds are actually remedial efforts made necessary by the accumulation in the blood, stroke, lymph and tissues of unexcreted metabolic waste and by the intestinal absorption of toxic byproducts of indigestion. The medical rationale of susceptibility and resistance. Everyone has literally trillions of fungi, bacteria and viruses in their body even when healthy. When physicians are confronted with this, they say that disease is not caused by these agencies because you are not susceptible or because your resistance is high. This is a cop-out, saying that these agents do not cause disease, but those factors which dispose us to susceptibility do, since the word susceptible means that the criterion which establishes susceptibility is the actual cause of the disease and not the microorganism or the agency blamed. This cop-out confirms that the supposed contagious agents, the bacteria, viruses and fungi, do not cause disease. The actual cause is whatever causes susceptibility or low resistance. If we maintain our body in a clean, healthy state, then germs are irrelevant for susceptibility does not exist. Germs, viruses and bacteria are not the cause of disease. Our best defense is good health. And this bit was interesting because it talks about viruses. Initially, the word virus meant poison and the word virulent meant poisonous. Today, virus means the submicroscopic entity and virulent generally means contagious. Modern medicine has employed the term virus to mean an ultra-minute form of life that infects cells, which is then blamed for causing more and more of our diseases. According to the popular portrayal of virus, it is a form of life that parasites all life forms, including animal, plant and saprophytic fungi and bacteria. In descriptions, the viral disease viruses are credited with such actions as injecting themselves, incubating, laying in wait, invading and having an active stage, commanding, reactivating, disguising themselves, infecting, conducting sieges and being devastating and deadly. Seriously, are any of those scientific terms? Conventional medicine theory explains that viruses come from dying cells which they have infected. The virus injects itself into the cell and commands itself to reproduce itself, and this occurs until the cell explodes from the burden. Viruses are then free to seek out other cells to repeat the process, thereby infecting the organism. Virologists admit, however, that although viruses are distinctive and definitely organic in nature, they have no metabolism. They cannot be replicated in the laboratory, they do not possess any characteristics of living things, and in fact have never been observed alive. Did you get that bit? They've never been observed alive. So, live viruses are always dead. The term live virus means only those created from living tissue cultures in vitro within the laboratory, since trillions of them result from live tissue. But herein lies the point. Even though some laboratory cultures are kept alive, there is massive cell turnover in the process and it is from these dying cells that the viruses are obtained. These are always dead and inactive because they have no metabolism or life except being molecules of DNA and a protein. Viruses contain nucleic acid and proteins but lack enzymes and cannot support life on their own since they don't even support the first prerequisite of life, namely metabolic control mechanisms, and which even lowly bacteria have. Guyton's medical textbook acknowledges viruses have no reproductive system, no locomotion, no metabolism, and cannot be reproduced as live entities in vitro. Since viruses are not alive, they cannot act in any of the ways as ascribed to them by medical authorities except as functional unit of our normal genetic material inside the cell's nucleus or mitochondrial nucleus within the cell. Accepting the theory of contagion is contingent upon acceptance of the germ theory of disease that specific bacteria or viruses produce specific disease symptoms. This theory has been repeatedly demonstrated as incorrect in the scientific field and was even admitted by Pasteur as being incorrect. A so-called virus is a detached part of a once organically functioning entity whose genetic structure has the same relationship that a head has to the body. To akin any action to viruses is roughly akin to attributing actions to a dead person's decapitated head. Let's leave that there. I would encourage you to have a read of the whole document. It's very interesting. It'll be in the description of this video and also I'll put a link to the PDF if you want to download that for printing, although actually you probably do that from the website anyway. Um, you guys are amazing. I would think about putting this to good use because if people get this and they understand this, then the whole everything becomes a myth. The ground that these platforms they've built goes away and they sink because they can't hold, they can't be supported by the weight that's on top of them. Well, sorry, they can't support the weight that's on top of them. And that's really the approach I'm taking with people at this point is that 
understand what germ theory is, understand that you've been misled your entire lives about it because of interested parties, and that this is what it is. And if you actually look after yourself, the environment that you create internally, then you'll have your health back and then you won't need any of this ridiculousness that's being suggested to us. You guys are amazing and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.